video, I'm going to do a bunch of review questions on the price elasticity of demand. Question one, what is the price elasticity of demand? The price elasticity of demand measures how responsive consumers are to a change in the price of a product. It gives the percentage change in quantity demanded from a 1% change in price. Question two, if the price of a good rises by 3% and the quantity demanded falls by 4%, what is the price elasticity of demand? The price elasticity of demand can be thought of as the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. So writing the formula here, the percentage change in the quantity demanded is minus 4. Quantity demanded falls by 4%. And that was caused by a 3% increase in price. So in the, new, uh, in the denominator, I have 3. So minus 4 divided by 3 is minus 1.33. So in other words, every 1% increase in price reduces the quantity demanded by 1.33%. Question three, if the price elasticity of demand is minus 0 0.8, is demand elastic? No, uh, demand is elastic whenever the price elasticity of demand in absolute value is greater than one. So this would be an example of an elastic demand. Question four, what happens to total revenue if price increases and the price elasticity of demand is minus 2.25? Well, we're dealing with elastic demand here. The coefficient exceeds one in absolute value. So in that case, uh, demand is elastic because the price elasticity exceeds one in absolute value. When demand is elastic, a price increase reduces total revenue. So total revenue would fall in this example. Question five, the price elasticity of demand for avocados is minus 1.5. What happens to the quantity demanded of avocados if the price of avocados increases by 4%. So we're going to put our basic, uh, well, the answer here, the quantity demanded will decrease by 6%, which is minus 1.5 times 4. But the way to think about this more formally is just construct your elasticity of demand equation, which is a percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. So there are basically three things here. Uh, three variables, and we know two out of three. We know the price elasticity of demand is minus 1.5, and price went up 4%. So we're trying to solve for the unknown. So uh, solving for the price change in the quantity, we're going to just multiply both sides through by 4. So 4 times minus 1.5 is how I got the 6%. The price elasticity of demand for Amazon DVDs is minus 4. If Amazon wants to sell 10% more DVDs, what should Amazon do to the price of DVDs? So once again, I think the best thing here to do is to construct the formula. The price elasticity of demand is a percent change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. And we're told in this problem it equals minus 4. We know we want the the quantity to go up 10%, so that's why I have 10 here in the numerator. What we don't know is the price, so we're just going to solve this algebraically for uh, the price. So I'm going to multiply both sides through by the percentage change in price. So doing that simplifies to this. And then we're just going to isolate the percentage change in price term, so I'm going to divide both sides through by minus 4. So minus 10 divided by 4. Uh, 4 means we would have to lower the price 2.5% in order to increase quantity demanded 10%. Or another way of thinking about it, 10 divided by minus 2.5 equals minus 4, the price elasticity of demand. So Amazon should lower the price of DVDs by 2.5%. Okay, moving on. Question seven, what happens to total revenue if price decreases and the price elasticity of demand is in this range? It's inelastic. Anytime this value here is less than one in absolute value, we're dealing with inelastic demand. So the relationship between total revenue and inelastic demand would be as follows. When demand is inelastic, a price decrease reduces total revenue. And this would hold logically in reverse. If price went up when demand is inelastic, total revenue would rise.
Question eight, if the price elasticity of demand for Major League Baseball tickets is minus 0.5, what does that mean? Well, at first it means that the demand for Major League Baseball tickets is inelastic. And a more formal interpretation, it means that a 1% increase in the price of tickets reduces quantity demanded by a half a percent. Or we could also surmise if price of tickets went up 10%, 10 times minus 0.5 means the quantity demanded of tickets sold would fall by 5%. Question 9. If the price elasticity of demand for Wrangler jeans is minus 1.2, what does that mean? Well, uh, we're dealing with uh, elastic price elasticity here. And a 1% increase in the price of Wrangler jeans reduces quantity demanded by 1.2%. So we can see in these, these last two examples, consumers are more price sensitive for Wrangler jeans than they are for the Major League Baseball tickets. Question 10. Good X has lots of substitutes. Good Y has no close substitutes. Which good are consumers more price sensitive? Consumers will be more price sensitive to good X. Good X will have more elastic demand than good Y. So perhaps the most important determinant of how sensitive consumers are to price changes are the number and availability of substitutes for a good. If there are a lot of substitutes, consumers can easily escape a price increase by going on to a substitute good. Question 11, as the number of substitute goods increases, what happens to the price elasticity of demand? So as, as I was just explaining, uh, consumers are going to be more price sensitive as this number of substitute goods increases, so demand becomes more elastic. Question 12, consider these goods, three goods. We got a red Chevrolet Corvette, a sports car, and a car. Rank the goods in order from the most price elastic to the least price elastic. So the most price elastic, where consumers are going to show the most price sensitivity, would likely be the red Chevrolet Corvette. There's a lots of good substitutes for red Chevrolet Corvettes, blue Chevrolet Corvettes, yellow Chevrolet Corvettes, and so on. The next uh, most elastic good here would be the sports car. Okay. Um, not quite as many substitutes for a sports car like there is for a red Chevrolet Corvette. And then the least elastic here uh, would be a car. Not as many substitutes for a car uh, as there are for sports cars and red Chevrolet Corvettes. So the most to the least elastic. Question 13, is the price elasticity of demand more or less elastic in the long run? Demand is more elastic in the long run because there are likely to be more substitutes in the long run, and it is easier for consumers to change their behavior when given enough time. 14. If price rises and the quantity demanded doesn't change, what is the price elasticity of demand? Uh, the price elasticity of demand would be zero, and we're dealing with what we'd call a perfectly inelastic demand or perfectly inelastic demand curve. If the price elasticity of demand is infinity in absolute value, what is the shape of the demand curve? Uh, the demand curve is horizontal. Just the smallest increase in price here would reduce quantity demanded to zero. So consumers are infinitely responsive to a price increase when uh, demand is horizontal. We'd also call this perfectly elastic demand. I don't think I meant, yeah, so this would be an example of perfectly elastic demand. Okay, moving on. Uh, 16, if price rises and total revenue does not change, demand is blank, demand is unit elastic, and that means the price elasticity of demand is minus one. Price goes up, quantity falls, but the price increase uh, exactly offsets a quantity decrease and total revenue remains unchanged. 17 on a linear demand curve, where is the price elasticity of demand of minus one? Demand is unit elastic at the midpoint of a demand curve. So just find the midpoint of the demand curve and you know where demand uh, is minus one in elasticity. Question eight. The inverse demand for a good is price equals 100 minus 2Q. At what price and quantity is the price elasticity of demand minus 1? So we need to find the midpoint of the demand curve. Uh, 
probably be best to graph this, but that would occur where price equals 50. And the easy way to figure this out is uh, take this vertical intercept and just divide it by two. So half the value of the vertical intercept. And if you were to put 50 into this equation here for P and solve for Q, you'd find that Q equals 25, which is a half the value of the horizontal intercept. Question 19. The inverse demand for a good is P equals 100 minus 2Q. At what prices is demand elastic? Well, any price above the midpoint. So as we found, the midpoint of the demand curve occurs where price equals 50 from our last example. So any price above $50 demand is elastic. The price elasticity of demand will exceed uh, 1 in absolute value. Any price below $50 demand would be inelastic. If demand is elastic for goods that take up a very, is demand elastic for goods that take up a very large fraction of a household's budget or income? Yes, demand is elastic for goods that take up a very large fraction of a household's budget uh, and inelastic for goods that take up a trivial fraction of the household's budget. So if, uh, uh, if salt were to increase in price by 10%, that is probably not going to reduce quantity demanded by very much. But if a price of a new car increases by 10%, uh, that might bust some consumer's budget and they can no longer make uh, the monthly payments. So... And that's how that works. Question 21. For some people, insulin is a necessity and video games are a luxury. Uh, which good will have more inelastic demand? Necessities have more inelastic demand. People are going to be less price sensitive than so-called luxury goods, which tend to have more elastic demand. Question 22. Uh, suppose price rises from four to six dollars and the quantity demanded falls from 30 to 10. What is the price elasticity of demand? So we have to use that midpoint formula. So I'm going to just break it down here in two steps. We're going to calculate the percentage change in quantity demanded using that midpoint formula. So we look at the, the change in quantity, okay? Um, 10 minus 30, and that's going to be divided by 20. What is 20? It's just the, the midpoint of these two values. The average of 30 and 10 is 20. So simplifying this, uh, we get minus 20 divided by 20, or just minus 1. So that's the percentage change in the quantity demanded. And price went up here. Uh, so the change in price, it went from 4 to 6. And we're going to divide that change in price by the midpoint of 4 and 6, or the average of those two numbers, which is 5. So doing the math here, that's going to be 2 divided by 5, or 0 0.4. And we're almost done. What is the price elasticity of demand? As we started this video, it's the percentage change in quine demanded divided by the percentage change in price. So minus 1 divided by 0 0.4 we get an answer of minus 2.5. 23, is slope and the price elasticity of demand the same thing? No. Uh, slope measures a unit change in one variable from a one unit change in another variable. Price elasticity of demand is a unitless measure. It measures a percentage change in quantity demanded from a 1% change in price. Slope doesn't change along a straight line. Elasticity changes at every point along a straight line. Uh, 24, good X and good Y have a price elasticity of demand of minus 2.2 and minus 0 0.67 respectively. If the price of both goods increases by 1%, what happens to total revenue for each good? Total revenue rises for good Y and falls for good X. It's falling for the inelastic good. And finally, question 25, every week you spend $20 on gasoline regardless of the price per gallon. What is, the, what is your price elasticity of demand for gasoline? It's just unit elastic here, uh, minus one. So maybe if the price of gasoline is $4, you'll buy five gallons in the week, spending $20. Uh, the next week, the price of gasoline is $2 a gallon, and you buy 10 gallons, also spending $20. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you found this.